You are what you define yourself to be. You can't let society put a label on you and, and worry about what it is that people think about you. So many people are defined by their profession or um, you know, what they do for a living. And honestly, the, the first way I define myself is, is as a dad. Everything I do um, is focused on what, it, you know, how, what effect is that going to have in my life as a parent or my daughter. Um, you know, I mean, I go to school to bring her a better life. I train to be able to, and I do so much of my sport, to be present. Uh, you know, even though life changes and things occur that are less than ideal, it doesn't mean that you have to give up on having dreams and achieving things and moving forward in your life and, and, and living a life you can be proud of. The word handicapped, I hate it. I hate it. it I, there's nothing that I, that I am handicapped from. Handicapped is a state of mind, you know. You can, you can handicap yourself from anything. Any able body can keep themselves from, from doing anything, from climbing, from climbing a mountain, from doing anything, because it's a mindset, you know. Um, just because you can't do something because you don't have your legs, that doesn't make you handicapped. That just makes you, that just makes you unable to do something because you don't have your legs. Dude, it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. What is that? We're training for uh, the Tour de Tucson, which is a approximately 40 mile ride um, down in Tucson, Arizona. And, uh, you know, I'm riding, riding with uh, Gavin and the Arizona uh, Disabled Sports Team. I broke my back um, in March of 2006. Um, and, I mean, I, all the time I think about how things would be different. You know, um, I mean, I, I was on a totally different path. I, I mean, I, I had a high-paying job and was pretty successful and was going to get married. And, you know, and, and it, I mean, there are times when it's tough for me to look at my friends and see where their lives are at and know that my life would be closer to that. So I was in the Air Force for 14 years as a uh, in-flight refueler, a boom operator. I haven't changed. That's the big thing is I haven't changed. You know, I am definitely the same person I, I was before um, I got hurt. I broke my back July 15, 2012 in a bicycle accident in Las Vegas, Nevada. I remember laying there, my legs went numb, I never felt my legs hit the ground. And the paramedics all came and it hurt initially right away, excruciating pain, and then it went away. And I remember staring up at the paramedic and going, okay, 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 I'm going to be all right, just push my legs down to the ground. And uh, they kind of looked at me like I was completely, um, uh, like I was complete, like I was just dumb, like, what are you talking about? And uh, then I looked down and I realized my legs were on the ground and that's when I knew that something bad had happened. Gavin wasn't able to be there when his daughter was born, uh, and that was that was tough. I mean, that was tough as the understatement of the year. I mean, it was very, very difficult for him. Well, it was a rather impromptu trip to Utah. So my brother and my best friend um, each kind of said, hey, you know what, you're going to have a baby in a few weeks, and we're never going to ever, ever see you again, so let's go do something fun. You know, it's not a bachelor party, but it's, it's time to get together and, and just kind of celebrate the next chapter. Um, 
we were fortunate enough to, to catch some snowfall while we were up there. And you know, if you've ever been snowboarding, you know that when the fresh powder is there in the morning and it continues to come down all day, but it's not heavy, that's one of the best days you'll ever have. And so we spent the whole day on the back bowls at Park City. Then it got to be about four something and went down to the resort and uh, I was done. We've been going pretty hard for three days. Your body's punished through that three days and, and he was tired. Um, and I said, you know, I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up and do another run or two. We made our way up the mountain and we decided to take a different turn down. Um, I don't recall whether we were trying to get to a certain point in the mountain or whether we were just, you know, no map, just this is the way we're going uh, in this run, but it was a different way than what we had seen. It. And uh, on the left-hand side was the terrain park. And so I'm, I'm coming up the side of the jump. Next thing you know, I hit the snow. And I remember, I remember thinking, wow, you know, like I hit it hard. I'm like, whoa, you know, at first I go, <gasps> take a deep breath in, because it just seemed to knock everything out of me. And my friend, you know, was like, are you okay? And I was like, I can't sit up. He came up and grabbed my shoulders. And as soon as he grabbed my shoulders, it just, everything seemed to have a red hue to it. And I was like, oh, no, stop, stop. There's something really wrong. I had something called a burst fracture, um, a T9 vertebrae, meaning all the compression on my spine um, met up where T9 is and the vertebrae exploded. I was three weeks away from my daughter being born and at that moment, my only concern was getting better, whatever better was going to be. When we got to the hospital, we wanted to know what was going on right away. And if you've ever been in a situation where you're waiting for doctor's reports from all the uh, analysis that they're doing when they bring a patient like this injured in, you just wait and wait and wait. You know, it's, it's torture. That was the last run, essentially, of the day. Maybe there was one more thereafter, but it was essentially the last run of the day. Had we not done that last run, we're not having this conversation right now. Gavin's not in a wheelchair right now. You know, he doesn't miss his daughter's birth. All the stuff that he's been through changed his life, clearly. I'm planning to work with my teammates. I want, I want over the next, because we've got about a month and a week now, over the next five weeks or so, to work out our drafting strategy. I know it's going to work out to where, um, probably where I pull more than anybody else. Uh, Lamar was going to be able to pull pretty steadily. Air, uh, Ryan will be able to pull, will be able to pull pretty steadily. And so we'll figure out a rotation, hopefully, to be able to sustain the majority of the race. My name is Lamar Ryberg. Gavin, Troy, and I will be working as a team uh, throughout the race. Do it in a, two hours or less. Usually, um, Gavin will be in the lead in the downhills because he can coast faster, and so we'll try and keep up with him. And usually, Troy and I will be in the front up through an uphill because uh, we can climb better. Um, otherwise, on a straight, try and stay together. My brake fell apart, so I got no brakes. The whole thing just came unscrewed and fell, fell apart, so uh, yeah, I just... Basically, spina bifida is I was born with a hole at the bottom of my spinal cord uh, when I was born. So when I was born, they had to sew that up. And uh, it uh, kind of messes up my nervous systems. Like my feet don't work. No feeling in my feet. Um, can't move my feet. Um, have basically no feeling from the knee down. Um, you know, other than that, you know, it kind of messes up my walking. There's no pity. Something hurts, deal with it. I mean, these are all people dealing with significant disabilities. My disability, I learned about. I, it came into my life. For them, this has always been their life. They have lived with challenges every day. I've been wheelchair racing for 25 years, but this is very different from wheelchair racing. 
um, and the gears, and just and it's and it's a constant pedal, and you want to make sure that you have that the gears. Troy was born with with brittle bone disease, and his disability does not define him. You know, I mean, he he's a professional. He, he's a well-paid professional. He's a college degree. He's been to the Paralympics. He's been a world record holder. For him, his disability is of little significance. And so whenever you're out there and if something hurts or if you're tired or whatever, no one's going to sit there and be like, are you okay? Do you need some water? You know, I mean, it, it's like, hey, man, life's tough. Deal with it. Let's go. Today we're working on uh, climbing and speed, uh, endurance, a lot of endurance stuff, uh, especially in the climb. Here it's going to be a lot of interval, you know, endurance, long rides, plus interval, plus uh, mountain climbing, um, you have to focus on all of them because you want to be as explosive as you, you can be in the climbs and then when you're going downhill you don't want to take any time off. When I broke my back my primary concern was being a parent. Put your balls off to the side girls. Okay, Coach, you got it. I knew that there was a little girl sitting here at home that needed me and needed me to be the best of me, whatever that was going to be. And so therapy was, I've got to do whatever it takes to be the best parent I can be for her. Right, we're the pit crew, Cam. Hey, Gavin. I had to have the flexibility of mind. There was no pity party. I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't spend any time sitting there saying, why is, woe is me and why did this happen? Go get it, go get it. This didn't just happen to me. It happened to my mom, it happened to my dad, it happened to my brothers, but most of all, it happened to Melissa, who, you know, the mother of my child, um, and it happened to my daughter. And this isn't about me. Still a normal member of society. Yeah, we're in a chair for the time being, for, you know, um, until my legs come back. That's going to come back. That's going to come with modern medicine, you know, uh, great technological miracles, or you know, hard work, or all of the above. His muscle return is not coming as fast as some people's, but his work ethic is keeping him moving forward. He's doing things beyond even what his muscle strength suggests that he should be able to do. That was basically the biggest concern was just that I wasn't going to. I, I didn't want to be a, a burden upon anybody, and. It's tough because now there's a fine line. I mean, it's a compromise, you know. There's days where you have to ask somebody for help, and that's okay. And that's just life in general, not in my situation or your situation or anybody else's situation. That's just life. You need to ask people for help and be okay and not have so much pride that you don't want to ask somebody for help, regardless of whether it is and regardless of who it is. But um, he doesn't have uh, a lot of function at the knee muscles and down to the ankles. So he really has to work hard to work on this walking. Um, it unlocks and allows me to bring my leg through like a normal, like a normal uh, knee, I guess, or as close to normal as possible. Should have had Eli Manning. But that, you know, down. there's no doubt in my mind, you know, whether it be tomorrow, five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, or how it's going to happen. Um, but I can't, I can't sit back on the sidelines and just wait for it to happen. I have to be active about it and constantly working, you know, with, with getting in braces and doing it, constantly trying to send signals down, electrical stimulation, FES. You don't stop doing the things that you love. If you love them, then you go after them as if you're going after your next breath. And that was how I lived my life before I got hurt as well. There's too much sponginess to it. number because uh, before they tried to contact my mom and, and I've been sick for pretty much since August um, I did didn't know it I mean I was dragging on energy and feeling really bad and having issues managing my bladder I feel awful I mean I, I wake up in the morning nauseous and my abdomen really 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 hurts and I, my bladder is out of control 
Um, and I mean, I've, <laughs> I've changed clothes more times in the past few days than I care to admit. And, um, and now I, I actually went to my doctor today and had them put in a Foley catheter. So I have a leg bag that's collecting my urine. Mm. I will not be doing a two liter juice on this year. Um, my front fork uh, snapped. Uh, so I am not able to, uh, to participate in this race. Uh, to get it fixed, to get it welded, it would cost about $400. Uh, to get a new one, it cost uh, about 900 Really not that permanent. Oh, it's not. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's not permanent at all, but yeah, I mean, it just makes it tighter. Right. Yeah. Oh, I have a bladder infection. I'm supposed to go see an infectious diseases doctor because it's a really bad staph, staph, yeah, staph infection. And um, <laughs> like my appointment won't come until next week so at some point, which is 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 synonymous for, with saying um, go to the hospital because <laughs> I would get really really really, really sick um, if that if I just went by that plan. Just gotta keep training, man. It's just, it's just same shit, a different day. I initially started all of this activity um, because I didn't think that my body was going to hold up. I felt very much that if my body continued to deteriorate at the rate it was deteriorating initially following my injury with all the illnesses and complications that I wasn't going to last long. I do it to be able to show my daughter that you can set goals and achieve things despite circumstance. I mean everybody's going to have setbacks that she can choose her own path and and find excellence um, and uh, and she doesn't have to say, well, I can't do this, I can't do that because of this, because of that. It's like, well, sometimes you can't do everything that you would hope to do, but you can still find goals and, and, uh, and meet them and challenge yourself and excel and, and, uh, and have success in life. I didn't want, I never wanted to be a burden to my wife, you know, I never wanted to, to have to rely on her more than a husband relies on his wife, you know, and my thought process, you know what, I don't want to do that, so, you know, I'm going to give her the out, and I gave her, you know, we kind of had a serious conversation, I said, you know, Megan, I don't want to be a burden on you, if you want out, you can be out, and it's okay, and she said, absolutely not, she was, as long as you remain the, the man that I fell in love with, then, I'm going to be by your side till, you know, the last day. And uh, that's a big thing to me was, you know, no, I, it, remaining who I am is what I am, you know. I don't want to change. For me, it was never about, you know, stopping what I loved. It was about finding a new way to do the things I loved. So I went to my doctor yesterday, had him put a Foley catheter in, so I don't have to worry about peeing during the race. I'm going to strap it to the side of the race chair. What? Yeah. And then just drain it whenever it's full. Oh shit. Yeah. Dude, I can't hear you. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. It's cold and it's raining, and I don't like the cold and I don't like the rain. Um, and it's going to be a, a cold ride, but... You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. It should start communicating soon. Alright. And we can live, but we're too afraid to die. Bye.
glass is broken. Yep. Got to dry it out. I guess it hasn't changed me. I mean, I still want to go out there and, and, and enjoy, you know, the stuff that is around us. Um, but as far as me as a person changing, I, I haven't changed. Um, thank, thankfully, I haven't changed. It's just different circumstances that we have to, that I have to, to, to get past. Yeah, I could, I could hear the... Like, I think everybody's racked with doubt okay. as they do things. Can I take this on? You know, can I be good at this? How? You know, uh, do I really have the skills and the abilities to, to do this? It's those people who, who push you, who encourage you, who, who um, see in you what you can't see in yourself that, that become you know, your strongest point of inspiration. I don't want it to be all about me because it's not about me anymore. It's about the next person that gets hurt and how I can help them and say, hey, let's go out and do this. Let's go, let, let me get you on a hand sign. Let's go out for a ride. Let's get, me, let's get you in a, in a basketball chair and let's go play basketball. You know, hey, let's go to Eloy and go skydiving because your life's not over. It's just beginning. Thank you.